UFC 301, you're fighting for the flyweight belt. Talk us how the Pantoja fight kind of came about because you fought and then, you know, what, a week, two weeks later, we're announcing you're fighting for the flyweight title. Yeah, so it sort of first popped into my head or it came to my attention uh, fight week before, uh, obviously, for the um, Match Nell fight. The broadcast team sort of asked, oh, would you be willing to fight Pantoja? after this one and I thought it was a stupid question but uh, obviously um, but there's so many more people above me and they just sort of went through the list and said oh this guy's injured this guy's got this going on blah blah so it's like you and Makaya oh well okay (laughs) definitely willing to step up and then uh, after the event Makaya had a not so great performance I had a one hit a quitter as you guys called it and then I got the call saying yeah do you want to fire and don't have to ask me don't have to ask me. Just take the fight. We'll, we'll be there in Brazil. Well, you you will be in a true road environment. Jeonesa Arena in Rio is a fortress. This is not the West Coast Eagles traveling to the MCG. But we <laughs> saw your countryman, Alex Volkanovsky, go to Rio, beat the king of Rio at UFC 237. And I understand you and he were backstage at, at the Perth announcement for 305 earlier this week. What, if anything, did Alex say to you? Or what can you learn from his success that he had flying the Australian flag in Brazil. Yeah, he just uh, mentioned that obviously they're going to be saying Uvama here, which is like you're going to die over there and it's going to be very loud and it's that and stuff, all that good stuff. So um, I'm excited for it. Um, yeah, all energy is good energy, right? And I've had some hostile crowds before and it was really fun. So I can't wait to get booed in a massive crowd and um, yeah, just make sure afterwards I don't go anywhere silly, I think. Well, it is a two-month turnaround from the Chanel fight to this fight. Were you a little concerned about not having a significant amount of time to prepare, or is two months plenty enough for you? I mean, obviously, in an ideal world, you'd get 12 weeks and that sort of thing, but I've been training for 10, 12 years now. I've been fighting for 10, training for 12, so um, if I'm not ready now, when will I be ready? Well, I do want to follow up on that point, Steve. I mean, it, you're getting a title fight after, after three UFC wins. You're still a young man, 28 years old. Where do you see yourself continuing to evolve as a mixed martial artist? I think the more you learn, the more you realize, or the more you, yeah, the more you don't know, you figure out that you don't know. So, like, you start with a jab when you, like, start boxing. You're like, oh, well, I figured this out, so now I can move on to my cross. And the better you get, you realize, oh, there's like 15 different ways to throw a jab and my hand's not coming back quite right. So there's always something to work on. I'm always trying to perfect my craft and uh, have different answers for different styles and that sort of thing. So um, a stupid answer, I guess, but all facets of my game need improving. Um, And yeah, I'll continue to do that. Well, you've definitely shown that you are capable of adjusting to a lot of different styles and you're going to be fighting very unique style in Pantoja at UFC 301. How do you kind of approach somebody like Pantoja who has a lot of power that is kind of reckless right off the bat but has that phenomenal jiu-jitsu that he's really well known for? Um, my, plan, oh, my plan mainly is just to punch him in the face and not get hit. Um, <laughs> he's going to... Again, obviously, come reckless. I'm going to try to stay on the outside. Um, it's like death by a thousand cuts, I guess. If I try to go in there and hit him really hard, it'll give him the chance to get in there and grapple with me and get into the mid range where he'll have an advantage. Um, but if I just keep nice and technical, nice and long, it'll frustrate and make it hard for him. But at the end of the day, also, I believe in my grappling. Before people started calling me a striker after my last fight, they said I couldn't strike and I was a grappler. So, um, I have full faith in my ground ability and my wrestling, and I think that on the feet I can really take over. We see guys get these opportunities from you know, gyms of all profiles. You know, the, the, we have the, the famous ones, Novo and Yao and uh, Sanford MMA, whatever they're calling it now, Kill Cliff MMA, and, and certainly City Kickboxing has increased its profile in the last half decade. What has been the reaction at Wilkes Martial Arts to you having this quick ascendancy in the UFC and now getting a title shot? Yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously, I've been very excited. Um, I don't know whether they 
didn't believe it beforehand or the people that are close to me definitely thought I could do it and have been pushing and helping me a long time. But like the people on the, like the newer people or the people on the outside that don't get to see what I'm doing every day at Wilkes, they might be like, oh, how did this happen? I can't believe somebody from Perth it sort of actually made it, I guess. I don't know. But um, I guess, yeah, I don't know how to answer it. Uh, in full, just everybody been supportive, I guess. Well, what has kind of the reaction been from the, you know, MMA crowd to this news? Has, has there been a lot of positivity for you? I've yeah, I had this quickly. I've talked uh, talked to other people and listened to other people, and they say don't read the comments. But I couldn't help myself for a while, so <laughs> I was reading them anyway. Um, but yeah, I quickly realised it's probably best to turn them off because you have both the people that are. <sighs> complimenting you so hard that it gives you a false sense of reality and then you got the people that are hating on you and wishing you to die and all that sort of stuff so um, I'm trying not to not to read the comments and just uh, talk to people around me and listen to people around me and we will get a full picture of what's to come. Well, the, the nice thing is in your sport, it is the ultimate proving ground. You have the ultimate opportunity to, to prove yourself and silence any haters that there might be. Steve, take me into the octagon, UFC 301 Rio. Aside from, as you said, punching Pantoja in the face more than he punches you, <laughs> what can we read from your body language or, or, or what you're doing in there to know that you're where you want to be, both mentally and physically, once that fight starts? Um, you'll see that I'll be calm. I, mean, I feel like I'm very good at... I don't know, hiding my emotions, not getting too excited, too down, to anything, like just staying within myself. Um, and you'll see that I'll look almost bored, I think some people have said, during the fight, and that's how you know that I'm ready to go. Well, a two-month training camp from Schnell fight to Pantoja. It'll be three months to UFC 305 for another quick turnaround. Pending, everything goes the way that you're wanting to. Obviously, you don't want to discount or discredit or, or take anything away from looking ahead to Pantoja. Would you be interested in another quick turnaround to fight in front of Perth at UFC 305? Yeah, 100%. Um, I don't think these type of opportunities come around all the time. People are always trying to fight in their hometown, especially after they win a belt. And, it often doesn't happen. You might be injured, whatever. So I don't want to bank on, oh, we'll come back to Perth another time and I'll do it then. I want to take the opportunities as they come. And, yeah, I want to give Perth um, Perth a Perth title fight. That will be amazing for me. And, yeah, then I can rest after that. Well, no greater opportunity than the one that sits in front of you, UFC 301. Steve Ursag, best of luck. We hope the next time we chat to you, you got a, what, four kilo belt over your shoulder. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure.